Hello everybody, this is Jeff Fang with Team Real in the Blues. First thing today, I want to say thank you for taking the time to click on my video and watch it. And uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. You can use the little subscribe icon right here on the screen, or you can wait till the end of the video, or you can just search my name. If you really like it, go ahead and click that bell, and that way you'll be notified when I put something new on there. Well today, what I'm going to go over is I got a lot of questions about a drifting video i done, and people seen the stick weights I was using. I like to use stick weights because they're just easy. I use them for everything. But I mean, you can order a stick weight mold. But if you notice, these are a little bit different. And they're pretty easy to make, actually. These right here weigh about two ounces. And this one right here weighs about four ounces. Let me show you how I make my sinker molds. If you'll look right here, there's the four ounce. And if you'll see, I've got some other molds on it. So that way, I can flip it around like this. And that gives me my two ounce molds. Pretty simple. All I use to hold it together is just a simple nut and bolt. Just like that. Once I take and pour the lead, I'll just turn it upside down and shake it. The leads fall right out. I can make a couple hundred in no time at all with this. Alright, let's show you how we do this. Alright, the first thing you're going to need to make these sinker molds is, is of course, lead. But uh, you're going to need aluminum. Aluminum is the best product for doing it because of a couple reasons. It gets good and hot good and quick, it cools down pretty quick, and it doesn't distort as bad as steel would. If you tried to make these out of steel, they wouldn't last two or three pours and they would distort and twist to the point where you couldn't get a good pour anymore. But what you gotta do is you gotta decide how big a sinker you wanna make. This right here is about three quarter inch thick uh, aluminum, but the mold, the sinkers I'm gonna make right now, they're not gonna be quite so big. They're only gonna be about two and a half, maybe three ounces, so I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna use half inch aluminum and I've got some half inch aluminum scrap laying around. So what you gotta do is you just, uh, I use a table saw. You can use a skill saw, but I use a table saw because a table saw, you can set it up and with the accuracy of a table saw, you can cut them nice and straight and you can get good molds. Because that's the biggest thing you need. You need them to be good and consistent. Like I said, I'm using half inch thick. And you can see this is an old piece of a uh, half inch plate aluminum I had laying around. I use it for everything. So we're going to go ahead and rip this down and get our sinker mold. We got it ripped down, and you can see what we have here. It's a nice, consistent piece. It's about, uh, I didn't even bother to measure it. It's four inches tall. So that ought to make some good sinkers. So I should be able to make sinkers that are somewhere around three and a half to three and three quarter inches long. And the reason why I like to rip it in a long piece like this is that way I know it's the same thickness from end to end. Now, then I can cut this, and when I cut this, then it'll give me my two halves of my mold. All right, the next step we gotta do is we've got it ripped down, we know what we're gonna do here. You don't really wanna make the molds too awful long because the longer you make them, the more likely they are to warp in the centers. I found that about seven inches works out to be about the per perfect uh, size. So we'll just mark this at seven. And we'll mark it at seven again. All right, that should give us the perfect mold. We'll go ahead and get that cut going to use an old miter box I keep around the house just for this purpose right here. Like I said, all we got to do, see how it's got these little burrs around it? We just gotta get rid of those burrs. There we go. Two good, clean pieces. Now I'll just sand all the burrs off of the edges here 
to where they can fit together nice and tight. And that way it'll be the basis for our sinker mold. Now when we put them together, see they fit perfectly tight. There's no gap whatsoever. And they sm slide smoothly, so that means that everything is nice and true. All right, we'll move on. All right, on these sinker molds, instead of having all the individual holes for the pins like I made on these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something a little different. It's gonna be the first time I've ever tried this. I'm gonna try to put a pull pin to where you can pull one time and it pull the pin out of all the sinkers at one time, then you can dump them out. So what I've decided to do is I've got a quarter inch. Well, it may not be a quarter inch. This might be a 3 16th. Nope, this is a 1 8 brass rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my table saw because the kerf on a blade is 1 8 on a, on a skill saw blade most of the times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to where it literally cuts 1 16th of an inch deep inside these molds. By doing it this way, as long as I run both molds through from the same direction, like this, then the gap will be in the same spot. You just gotta make sure, you gotta pick which side you want to be your face side. And from what I've seen, this is the best side, that's the smoothest on these molds. So I want these both. These are gonna be my insides. And I'll compare them and see if, they, I mean, they're pretty true cuts because I ran both pieces through at the same time. It don't make no difference at all. So what I'll do is I'll call both of these the bottom. So now all I gotta do is run these through just like this where the X is facing me and the X is facing down. And I should be able to get it where I can put a pull pin in it. That gap don't look like much, but see that gives me a perfect template. Now I can run an eighth inch drill bit into that gap and it'll keep the, drew, the drill bit nice and true and it'll run right in there. And then I can put this brass rod right inside there and pull it right out. As you can see from the first part, it's not really that hard to do. It's a lot of little steps, but it, it don't really take that long to do it. So now we've got this ready. Now I'm going to show you how to bolt these together and what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through these. I'll put a bolt through them to lock them as tight together as I can. That way everything stays nice and true while I do all the drilling to make the sinker mold. I know it seems complicated, but it's really not. If I wasn't filming this, I could make me a mold in about 30 minutes or less and that's uh, taking my time. So hopefully you'll be able to make your own after you see this. Okay, so what I've done, you can see I've got them lined up perfectly with where I run them through the table saw, and I need to drill an eighth inch hole. So what I'll probably do is I'll drill just a sixteenth over, or my sixteenth, I'll probably drill about a thousandth over an eighth inch. That way this brass rod will slide cleanly through it. Now if you don't have a drill bit that's where you got plumbing down to the thousandths, you can drill an eighth inch hole, or you can drill one size smaller, and the smallest you can get right below the eighth, and you can always sand this and polish off a thousandth or so. All right, let's get it done. All right, just remember, when you're drilling this, you want to be pretty accurate, so take your time. Those slots we cut should guide this right down through there with no issue whatsoever. I'm not trying to guide it, I'm just letting it go because that slot we cut in there should guide it right down through there. All right. 
Now you can see, that just slides right down in there, no problem. Alright, so as you can see, this is nice and smooth here, maybe a little rough because I cut it with a table saw, but they're both the same height, same everything. I've got it setting up on this so you know all the pieces are pretty much equal. And you know I run it through the uh, table saw, and then I run a eighth inch bit through that gap to make it round. And the reason why I done that was that way I can use a brass rod as a pull pin. Now, right there's what you got. And you see I kind of got a little stupid right here. I was trying to use a really dull uh, bit, but I went and got a sharp bit. And once I got a sharp bit, it eat right through it with no problem. If you're gonna do that style, it always pays to have a long bit. I tried to do it with a short bit from this side, short bit from that side, and they were dull and they kind of wiggled a little bit. But for the most part, it won't matter because this is just something for me to slide the, bla the brass rod through. All right, and here's your brass rod. That's half the thickness of the brass rod sinks in that. So when I put this one on it, like this, you can see what that does, it just gives me a way to make the holes in them. You can see how easy that pulls in and out. Now if it's really, really tight, it really won't matter. And the reason why is because we're gonna put clamps on it or we're gonna put bolts on these to use for clamps. But that way you just loosen the bolt, turn this a couple times, slide it out, and then you'll have your sinkers. So now, let's go ahead and get the sinker portion done, and I'll show you how I drill it out to make the what I call drift weights, because they're just stick weights. I use them for drop shot and drifting, for perch, for about everything. The next step we gotta make is decide what size sinkers we wanna make. And really, I can make these things up to a half inch in diameter. It just depends on how big you wanna make them. What I'm probably gonna do on this one, I'm probably gonna make most of them about two ounces. I've learned that if you make them around uh, five sixteenths to three eighths, it gives you about an ounce. If you go up to about close to a half half inch, it end up getting you closer to three to four ounces, depending on how long you pour them. All right. So the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and lay the brass rod inside of it, and I'm going to go ahead and put the two pieces together. And now that I've got that done, I'm gonna take a clamp and clamp them together as tight as I can. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna ensure that they stay lined up perfectly. And what we'll do is we'll drill a hole right, right here next to the edge. We'll drill a hole right here next to the edge. And what that hole is for is to accommodate us running this uh, 3 8 bolt through it. And what that does is when you're making your sinkers, you just Spin it, tighten it up, pour your sinkers, loosen that nut, the mold instantly just flops apart. You shake it, dump your sinkers out, tighten the nut back down, and you can just keep pouring. All right, now we're getting ready to drill those holes. This thing is four inches. I want to put them right here close to the center. I want them a little bit right here, so I'm going to put a little bit off this edge. So I'm going to say two inches. Two inches. And I'm going to set them about three-quarter, uh, five-eighths off the outside edge. That gives me plenty. I'm going to do this one. Five-eighths off the outside edge. And normally, I always drill a small hole just to get it started. So I'll just kind of like dimple it a little bit with a drill, and then I'll use my drill press to finish them up. And then after I get this one drilled, I will just set it on top of the other one and then drill through this one through the other one. That way you're not trying to drill through both of them and trying to keep them steady. All I'm trying to do is just pretty much get a spot to start. Alright, you can see I've got the the little holes here, just something to give me a guide. We're we'll going to get that drill. Take your time. You want it to be a nice, smooth circle. If you can try to go too fast, it'll make it wobble and make it out around. All right, since we drilled this on a drill press, if you look real close, you can see these little burrs sticking out. Every time you drill something, 
always just take and get you a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of work it and that removes all them little burrs because you don't want anything that's going to put any gap or any space between these two forms. And we'll clean the whole thing up after we get it all drilled out. We'll clean the whole thing up. Like I say, seems like a lot of steps, but it's really not. If I wasn't filming it, I could make this whole mold in less, less than an hour. On a bad day, an hour. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. We got these already drilled in this piece of our form, in this piece of our mold. So what I'm going to do, I'll lay the piece of brass in here. And what that does, it keeps those lined up. It's imperative that that part be perfect, perfectly lined up. Now you can see this form, I can't shift it at all, this mold. The top piece and the bottom piece are locked together real good. Most time I'll put a clamp on it and then drill these holes, but we'll just put her in a drill press and go ahead and just mark those next holes by drilling through these. And that way we know they would line up perfectly. And as you can see, that is the exact size of that bolt. So what we'll do is we'll get this side drilled out, that side drilled out, punch these all the way through, and then drop our bolt through. All right, we got these lined up perfectly, got this through, got this side flush. Let's go ahead and get our holes drilled for the other side. You notice I'm going right through the old holes that I just drilled in the other one. Take your time, because that drill bit will try to walk when you first start. But once you get it good and started, we know we're on a drill press, we'll be fine. All right, so we got that one right here, already punched all the way through. We'll just go ahead and stick our bolt through it. And once we stick that bolt through it, it actually acts as another way of keeping this lined up perfectly. Now, could you do this with a drill without a drill press? Absolutely. Would it be as accurate? Uh, it probably could be, but it'd be a lot harder to do. All right, well now we got our forms made, our molds. I drilled the holes through, you can see where I got a bolt run through it. That way when you pour your sinkers, all you gotta do is just loosen these up a little bit, shake the mold, and your sinkers will fall right out. Now, you'll notice I've got this thing gapped open. And I'll explain to you and show you why here in just a second. So, what I've done is I've stuck a washer in between here and made a little gap. The reason why I made that little gap that way when I go to drill this, the drill is going to want to follow that gap. Where if I had them pulled dead tight when I was drilling it, if you didn't have it perfectly level, the drill bit would want to walk off to the side a lot. If it walks off a little bit to the side here, it ain't going to hurt a thing. And if you were doing this using a hand drill, you could see it'd be a whole lot easier for this thing to stay on path. Now, what we're going to do, we will drill a small hole first. I'll probably go even smaller than this one. I'll probably go just enough to where it's a little bit bigger in this gap. We'll drill that hole first. We'll punch all of them. And then we'll go up maybe two sizes and punch them out again. And we'll go until we get up to the size of sinker we want to make. All right. Now, let's go ahead and lay everything out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to space these out about three quarters of an inch. So, what we'll do is we'll go... I hate these... Uh, little teeny tiny ones here let me get where I can see my own thing here there we go we got them all spaced out three quarter and that's where we're gonna make our holes at all the way through all right here we go all right one thing I wanted to point out Getting it up to this stage took a little time, you know, getting this groove made in here and getting all that done. Now, if you was making these stick weights just to use as something to fill a, let's say, a piece of PVC pipe or even a rubber hose that you were going to use for drifting, so you don't have to go through this stage right here. That'll cut 15 minutes off your total time right away. 
you can go ahead and just skip straight to this step just make your molds get your pieces straightened out so let's say if you were doing that you could just get your two pieces of aluminum of equal size clamp them together drill these two holes through here like that and then you can skip straight to this stage and make you some pencil weights now like i say quarter inch is about the perfect size now like i said i go plumb up to half inch i even have some that are a full three quarter inch round and i rarely use those so i don't make that many of them anymore all right here we go and just remember take your time don't get in a hurry to drill these holes because that's what's going to set the holes for the whole thing if you get these all goofed up then the rest of them are all everything from this point on is just going to be kind of goofy uh just remember when you go into this take your time go slow because it's if you don't, it's going to want to walk. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the other advantage to putting those washers in there you notice all the shavings were falling out the bottom they weren't getting caught up in the drill bit so it gives you a lot cleaner hole all the way through also all right now let's move it up to the next size drill bit Okay, I'm done drilling them. I took the spacers out and I took the bolts out. I see here's what you have. Now, if you wanted to leave them oblong like that, you'd have to drill them a lot bigger, of course, because we got the pin coming in from the end. Now, my other mold, I've got the pins. I got individual pins in each one of them. And the way you do that is you don't do this part. You drill everything out. You go and do all these drills here, and then all you do is simply drill a hole with your drill press drill you an eighth inch hole in each one of these about a quarter of an inch up from the end you drill one side always drill one side once you get done with that side clamp your two molds together line them up perfectly drill through the hole you've already made all the way through and then go ahead and drop your little pin or whatever you're going to use like I say I use brass for about all of it and I've got these little brass pins that I just drop in and then when I drop them in, I'll drop this one in. I'll go to this end, drill that hole all the way through, drop a brass pin in it. That locks your mold together. That way it's not moving around. And then I punch all the rest of the holes. And every time I punch a hole, just go ahead and drop your pin in it. And that way they're all lined up. All right. Now let's go ahead and make this one as big as I want it. I'm wanting to go up. This right here would be about an ounce and a half. I'm wanting to go up to about two and a half to four ounces. And since I'm wanting my mold to be round, so I can strop them inside of a piece of pipe, I'm going to go ahead and take all these oblong holes. And like I said, it seems like a lot of unnecessary steps, but trust me, by drilling those holes there to start with, with that spacer, these right here are going to be nice and true. Most people that try to do this using two pieces of aluminum, they get so out of whack trying to run through that great gap between the two of them. It just never works out. I mean, you watch how easy this will, this will follow. You see, it's just going right down through that, that gap perfectly. I'm not doing anything to keep this straight up and down. I'm just holding it to keep it from spinning. The drill bit's going to follow that gap. We got them all rounded out. So that's all my sinker. So I can pour one, two, three, four, five, six. I can pour seven at a time. What I'm going to do now, 
I've already cleaned this up, already washed all the oil off of it. So what we're gonna do now is we'll go ahead and run our bit back through this hole here to make sure that all the shavings and the burrs are out of it. And then once I do that, she's ready to start pouring sinkers. Really wasn't that hard. All right, there's what it looks like. A little dirty, but that's what she looks like. Pretty little mold, wasn't really that hard to do. Let's pour a few sinkers and see what it looks like. Okay, there's your completed mold. Now these bolts make it nice too. I always use longer than what I need. Uh, I just found these two when I'm get done, when I get ready to start using it, I'll put bolts on here that are about four inches out this side. And what I'll do is I'll weld these nuts inside of two little pieces of pipe about that long. That way I can actually just turn the pipe, tighten the nuts down, pour them, and then loosen them up. And when you loosen them up, see how this thing will flex. So then all I gotta do is just flip it over, shake it a little bit, and all the weights will fall right out. And then all I gotta do is push it back tight, spin these nuts back down tight, and pour the next batch. There's my brass rod. Before you pour your next batch and before you tighten it down, slide your rod in. Pour your sinkers, loosen this up just a little bit to kind of take the pressure off. Turn this, pull it out, turn it upside down, shake the sinkers out again. Like I say, the process goes real quick once you get the hang of it. All right, let's go pour some sinkers and see what we get. Well, before I pour them, let's see what you, let me show you what the inside of it looks like now that it's finished. I've already sanded it and cleaned it up. Like I say, this is a brand new mold, so your first cup of pours may not be that great because it ain't seasoned it out yet. And you may see something where you got a burr and a sinker wants to hang in it. But there you go. Can't get much better than that. You see what we have here. Everything lines up nice and neat. There's the holes. There's my brass pin where I pull it out and it gives you your place to hook your swivels. Alright, here we go for our first pour. Now just remember, when you're working with lead, it's dangerous. Normally I always wear gloves, I wear face protection the whole nine yards, and I always do it outside where it's well ventilated. Alright, I've got this set where it's kind of a medium drip when it comes out. Uh, you can set it as fast as you can as it'll go. But uh, I'm going to do this one kind of slow at first to see what we can come up with. Alright, here's the first pour. Knock that little bubble off. And you can see the holes are big enough that you can see right down in it. There we go. I got seven of them poured. We'll take it in there where it's a little bit more light and we'll pop the mold off and see what we got. All right, here we go. We just got done pouring our first batch of lead in it. Let's see what it comes up with. First thing you wanna do, loosen these nuts just a little bit. Turn this to get it broke loose so that it ain't sticking to the lead anymore. I don't mind wearing gloves, this thing's pretty warm. Go ahead and hold on to it right here and I'll go ahead and pull this out. There we go. We got that out of it. Go ahead and loosen these up a little more. Now, all we should have to do is just shake it a little bit. And there's our lids. Alright, there's enough of them to get started. Let me pick up the ones that fell on the floor. They're going to be a little warm. There we go, seven leads. Really didn't take that long to pour. And for the first pour, that ain't bad. Most time you'll have a couple of them that get stuck in it and you gotta do a little sanding to get any burrs off. But as you can see, these turned out real nice. 
I think these turned out great. And like I say, this is just one way to make the mold. Hopefully by watching this video, you can make all kinds of different molds. Now if you look at this mold I made, you notice I used a smaller bit first. I drilled it all the way down. And then that way it makes it smaller on the tip and it makes it where most uh, swivels will hook right through it. This one is four ounces right here. And then if you flip it over on the back side, these are two ounces. And I just use the same thing as this right here. I just cut them in smaller pieces and stick it one through each hole. So when I'm making the two ounce, I just put them just like that. And you'll notice they're oblong because I put the spacer in there, but I never drilled them out round. And then when you want to make bigger ones, just flip your mold to the other side and you can pour your big four ounces. Like I say, you can do all kinds of different ways now. So hopefully that video will help you out. I appreciate you watching. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please push the subscribe button and ring that bell. If you ring that bell, every time I post a new video of fishing or how-to, you'll be notified.